My name's uh, Philip Fitzsimons, often called Fitz because there's too many Philips in the world. Um, that's not a statement of my opinion. Um, so when you share a, uh, an hour with two evangelists, you can be sure that they're going to fairly divide the, uh, the time up to 20 minutes each. Um, they've given me minus six minutes um, for this slot, so I'm really going to compress this. Thanks, guys. Um, love the LED. Um, so this was a, a workshop we did at um, reInvent, um, really just to introduce the concept of the well-architected um, framework. And uh, so I'm going to basically run through that in the 20 minutes I've got left. Um, <laughs> So the well-architected framework, in this session, I'm going to compress a lot of information and basically explain what the well-architected framework is, why AWS uh, created the framework, um, going to talk about a, a, a fictional example and how you might use the uh, well-architected framework to do that review, with the goal being that by the end of this 20-minute session, um, that you'll be able to review an architecture yourself and apply that to uh, help you improve the kind of systems that you're building. So why did AWS build the Well-Architected Framework? Uh, at AWS, we recognize the value in having customers understand what best practice is. And we want to make sure that we are all focused on some of those areas in architecture that are often neglected. And we want to ensure that we all have a consistent approach to evaluating architecture. So that's what the Well-Architected Framework gives you, a way of reviewing an architecture in a consistent fashion so that you don't miss out on areas that sometimes are maybe easy to forget. Um, so it's a set of questions across four pillars with some design principles to guide you on how to do that uh, review and how, also how to think about architecture in general. So um, I like to think about this as an example of uh, an analogy of, you know, constructing or building, you know, technology solutions is a lot like constructing physical buildings. If the foundations of a building are not solid, this can lead to structural issues which can... Um, make it difficult for that building to achieve its functional uh, capability, but also can frankly make it quite a dangerous thing to try and use. Um, when you're building technology solutions, if you neglect the four pillars of security, reliability, performance efficiency, and cost optimization, you'll end up building a system which probably doesn't live up to your expectation and doesn't deliver on your functional requirements. When you do use these four pillars, you'll be able to build secure and reliable solutions and allow you to focus on your functional requirements. So quickly to, uh, to talk about the, the four pillars themselves, security is really about thinking about how do I protect my data and systems, whether that's uh, the integrity of data or the confidentiality of data, how do I know who can do what, how do I protect my, my, my systems, and how do I um, understand what's happening to my system and respond to security events. From a reliability point of view, we think about this in three areas. So this is often about the foundational stuff that may be across projects or products, so like how are you going to set up your networking, um, how are you going to handle change, whether that's change that you're making to your infrastructure or change that is occurring because the level of demand on your infrastructure is changing, and finally, how you recover from failure. From a performance efficiency area, and this is one of my pet areas really, um, it's really about thinking about how we use um, computing resources uh, to achieve things you know, efficiently. So thinking about instances and serverless computing, thinking about how I persist information to storage systems, how I can have queryable data with databases, and how I can trade off uh, space and time, so things like caches or CDNs, to improve the performance of a system. And then from a cost optimization viewpoint, we're thinking about how do we avoid unnecessary costs. So how do we match supply and demand with things like EC2 auto-scaling, how we can use cost-effective resources, so maybe that might be the instance type selection, so we talked about the T2 uh, Nano, for example, but also using things like uh, reserved instances and the spot market to drive down your costs. Um, expenditure awareness, know where you're spending your dollars so that you can control and hopefully over time push those down. And then optimizing, so as new features and services become available, using them to reduce the cost of your architecture. The Well Architected Framework also provides you with some design principles. So these are either generic design principles that we think about in architecture as a whole or are specific to a, a particular pillar. So these are the kind of principles that as architects we think that if you imbue them into your architectures will allow you to build cloud native architectures. So for example, here's one from the security pillar which is talking about if you're going to have security events, automate your responses to them, you'll have a much better security day. In terms of the questions themselves, there's uh, over 40 questions. Each of the questions has obviously the question text, but it also has 
some help text that gives you some context as to what we were thinking about when we asked this question, and a set of best practices that we've seen other customers use to achieve good outcomes. What I would like to stress here is that the well-architected framework is not uh, a replacement for thinking. You are still going to have to use your architectural judgment to decide whether this is valid in this particular instance. So, for example, if you're talking about um, security of data at rest, there may be times where you said that that data isn't actually really data. It's pretty dumb stuff and it's not sensitive. Of course, if that data is about the behavior of your users or has got personally, personally identifiable information in it, then you really should be thinking about how you encrypt and protect that data. So example walkthrough is going to be really uh, detailed. So fictional company, um, we talked about this at the event, and we basically introduced people to the concept of this company that flies around uh, aircrafts, takes pictures of uh, landscapes, and basically 3D prints nice um, models that you can play with. Um, they basically are looking for investment. They wanted someone to review it, and they were asking us as a whole team to do that review. Um, really, what we're trying to explain here is the concept of this is the kind of thing that, as solutions architects working for AWS, we do every day. And I'm sure as architects working in companies, you have these conversations all every day where somebody says, I'm going to build this thing. Do you think it's a good way of doing it? So it's really, how do I think about that conversation? Um, so they have a, a, a great example of Conway's law, which basically says that your organizational structures will end up being reflected in your architecture. So they had three different teams. And unsurprisingly, they end up with an architecture that looks like three big lumps talking to each other. Um, they then have this architecture, um, and it's actually lovely to, to meet a customer or anyone who's actually got an up-to-date diagram of their architecture. Um, and as an architect, I'm sure you've all been there where you're saying, well, this is the diagram. I'm not quite sure if it's up-to-date. but So this is one of the things that I want to call out, is that you know, this, is, this is presenting in some ways an academic viewpoint that you're going to get a correct view of a, an architecture. You're going to have to ask detailed questions and probe to see whether this is really truly the reality anymore, or has somebody else in the team actually already changed the way that works? Um, and then, of course, I was going to have plenty of time to talk through how the architecture works and uh, all the different things that go on there. So um, <laughs> hopefully you all understand that now. Good. Um, but just to save some time, um, let's just zoom in on one bit of that architecture. So um, really, the idea is that, is that if you take any architecture, you can decompose it into subparts that you could review on their own. So um, you could take uh, a company that has three departments, and you could just take one of those departments and review their architecture on its own. Or you can flip it on its head and say, I'm just going to do security first, and then I'm going to do performance efficiency or reliability. So you can pick and choose. Um, and obviously, if you have a team of architects, you can work together to do that in parallel and save you time if you're under pressure. Um, so in this case here, I just wanted to show that what they were doing is that they were having information in terms of pictures and videos being captured. Um, they would then take those off the aircraft, put them into a docking bay, which would basically upload that information into an EC2 instance. And in this case, you should be able to see, if you've got amazing eyesight, um, that it says FTP here, which is everybody's favorite protocol for transmitting data around. So. Um, what we're really thinking there is how, you know, when we go through the questions, a question will apply in many places. And the example I want to think about here is the question around um, data in transit. So security question number two, as if by magic, uh, is about how are you encrypting and protecting your data in transit? And what you're really thinking about in this case is to say, where does this question apply? So where is their data in transit? Um, and what are they currently doing? And what do you think they should be doing? So in this case, they're using FTP. We know that FTP doesn't encrypt data. We, we really would like to encrypt that data. So maybe they should consider something like um, SSH FFTP. Um, so that's a simple example of how you can use the question to drive a standard, consistent approach to say, how do I do security around data in transit? Um, the white paper is actually on the website. Who's downloaded it? I really recommend, given the amount of time I've had in this presentation, that you take the opportunity to read that. Um, then we have a breakout session where we quickly do the review. <coughs> And then to wrap up, um, <laughs> I don't think I've done too bad. Nine minutes, 50 seconds. Quick, stop talking. Um, so what you find when you do the review in, in you know, so often we do this in teams of like uh, five or six people, maybe there might be 10 teams, is that people identify consistently the same things, which is one of the problems that we normally have doing an architecture review is being consistent to say, did we really think about performance? Did we think about cost efficiency? And of course, we've all come from a traditional background where we think about 
some things more than others. So for example, performance efficiency is not something people spend too much time thinking about because normally you get your budget before the project's even written any code and you never have any opportunity to optimize. Well, of course, in AWS and the cloud, you can actually use techniques to mean that your architecture can evolve over time and become more efficient. Um, so hopefully, you've got a good understanding of what the well architected framework is. Uh, you've understood that you know, when we look at these questions that there are trade-offs that are being made and therefore there is no black and white answer. You're going to have to you look at the context of that business and work out whether, in this case, is this a critical issue or not or is this actually something that is okay to move over with. And it's a process of continuous improvement. So by doing a well-architected uh, framework review, you then have a bunch of stuff that you can put into your backlog. And I have examples of customers already who are then using that to go back to their business and say, we need more budget so we can actually improve our architecture. And this is the things that we want to do. And finally, this is all about guidance. So we're trying to imbue uh, the learnings we've got from you as customers as to what works and what doesn't so that you can then use that to help you not just with new architectures, but to think about new architectures, how you should build them. And with that, I'm done. Thank you. Hi, I'm Paul from NorCloud. I'm country manager for the UK business. Welcome to the AWS User Group UK's reInvent Recap Meetup. We hope that you enjoy this selection of videos. NorCloud is an AWS Premier Consulting Partner, helping organizations, whether they be startups or enterprises, with their journey into the cloud.